All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We're joined by head women's soccer coach Nikki Izzo Brown this afternoon. Um, coach, if you just want to start us off, kind of preview opening Big 12 play, our home series, our home season, I guess, on Friday against Kansas, and then uh, we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, excited. You know, obviously, um, conference season is here. We're excited to be home. Uh, it was a you know, tough weekend on the road uh, with Texas Tech and then uh, Iowa State, but uh, we're thrilled to to get back home. It's been a couple of weeks now. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. Just a reminder to use the raise hand feature when you're ready to ask a question. Looks like we're gonna start with Mr. Nick Farrell. Coach, how are you? I'm good, Nick, how are you? Good, good. Thanks. Hey, uh, just can you just give your uh, assessment of what you've seen from your players through the first two Big 12 games? What has impressed you? What needs attention? Yeah, as, as probably any soccer coach, um, international or national, will tell you, we just want to keep scoring goals. Uh, so I, I think around the 18, continue to be a, a little bit sharper. Um, laser focused on our decision making around there. Uh, but, um, you know, we walk away with four points on the road, um, you know, two turf teams. And tell you what, I thought I was in Kansas uh, with that wind on uh, Sunday. So it was uh, a lot of elements that uh, the team had to prevail through. And I was really proud of them. It was, um, you know, they they knew what was at stake and how important this part of their season was. So Definitely want to score more goals. I'll get, uh, I want to be more greedy, but we scored, you know, three goals in, in two games and, and that was important for us. Uh, and now moving forward, um, you know, we just got to keep tightening up around the box, get back to those shutouts. And, uh, you know, I, I think we uh, just got to bring that energy at home. Hey, Nick, did you have another one? Yeah, yeah. Can I follow up quickly about the, the road schedule? So, Coach, you, you have back-to-back -back road games that you just put in the books, and then you'll do it again in October at Oklahoma State and then Oklahoma. Um, some of the coaches that we've talked to around campus, they have differing opinions on if they want to play these Big 12 road swings like back-to-back -back, or if they like to go back and forth from home to away. Do you, do you have a particular feeling on that? Do you like to knock out the road trips together if you can? Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, if I'm going to Oklahoma, I want to go to Oklahoma and Oklahoma State just one time. And I, I think it's the grind of and the volume and the load that a soccer player puts on um, is incredible. And to, you know, travel out there and then travel back doesn't really make too much sense. So I, I would rather us be out there uh, because of the 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 demand of our sport. Now, um, I can't really speak to any other sport, but in my opinion, being in the Big 12 and seeing split weekends versus, you know, staying out there weekends, um, I, I think that uh, I would, if I have a choice, I'd rather knock it out and stay out there twice in one weekend. Yeah, so maybe, Coach, put more concisely on my part is that you play five Big 12 road games, but you only make three road trips. So is that advantageous for you guys this year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, there's no question um, that that's going to be important. You know, when we were in COVID, you know, two years ago, we were, you know, home, back, home, back, home, back. That was miserable. Um, so to, to be honest with you, that's something I'm comparing it to. And then when we do have a split weekend. So in my experience, in my opinion, um, yeah, for sure. I have a question from um, a student journalist who wasn't able to make the call. Um, he wants to know, kind of you were talking about, Nick was asking about what are the, the keys to, to move forward. Kind of, are you looking at any specific players to, um, to make those take in that role or to kind of step up and help with the team success? Well, I, I you know, we have a senior in Kesa Massey. So if we want shout outs, Kesa has to make every save. Uh, then you, you know, you look to a Jordan Brewster who's been here, um, 
you know, five years and Kenzie Youngst is working her way back in the lineup. So th I, I think from a leadership standpoint, um, when you're talking about shutouts, uh, but, you know, Gabby Robinson, Maddie Moreau, I mean, all of them, you know, are vital to that. And then moving up, um, you know, Lauren Sagala, look at that fifth year, really six year, I call her super senior plus, you know, coming up with two and Delari, obviously, um, as a sophomore starter, you know, really coming in and, and making some some noise. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to always lean to the upperclassmen because they have the most experience and and really know the expectation and, and have had that those years of coaching and understanding where freshmen coming in don't know what it's like to play Iowa State at Iowa um, or what Kansas will bring. So, yeah. Nick Farrell, you can go ahead. Yeah, so Coach, you just alluded to it that Lauren had a really nice performance against Iowa State, and you'd shared with us earlier that she was getting ready to hang her cleats up and then made a decision over the summer to come back. Uh, seems like you had a bit of a payoff from that decision over the weekend. Uh, did that make that moment a little more special for you or for her? Yeah, I mean, it's it's got to be frustrating for Laura, for Lauren to come back and, you know, not do the things she wanted to do. And um, I was just so happy and proud you know, for her that, you know, she was able to accomplish what she wanted by making that decision. Of course, absolutely. Um, for me to have another opportunity to be around Lauren is, is just um, another present on top of seeing her score two goals as her coach. So I love the opportunity to develop Lauren a little bit more and spend that time. So I was, I was so excited for her. I have another question that was sent in. Um, just kind of, you know, we're two games into Big 12 play now. Um, so kind of still dusting off some things, but um, you kind of mentioned this, but are what are the your like two keys to um, success in the remainder of Big 12 play? Got to take care of the ball. Got to take care of our ball. We got to take care of the ball. Uh, we definitely don't want to put ourselves in counter uh, counter attacking positions. And everybody's just uh, got to do their job. So I, I think when you you look at um, you know those two components, I, I think we'll be all right. There are no other questions from the group. I do have another one. Um, Andy, do you have a question for the? Uh, I was doing my live raise hand feature. Um, <laughs> Coach, how would you how would you grade your uh, you like that? Um, how would you grade your freshmen to this point? The, the ones that are you know getting getting some playing time, obviously. I, it is so complicated and hard to be a freshman and transition from playing against uh, youth soccer players to playing against women that have been in weight rooms for three years and then training at a hard level. So the speed of play, the athlete, all of that, the grind. And then the grind, it's the grind, right? Yeah. Um, and then being away from home and, um, you know, so I'm I'm huge fans of our freshmen. I, I think their attitudes have been fantastic. You know, they're um, contributing in every way they can and, and really trying to uh, be all-stars in their roles. And um, that's all I can ask for. Uh, Patrick, you can go ahead. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good, Patrick. Doing all right. Uh, I just had a quick question. So, you know, with these away trips, Nick talked about it as well. You have five away, five away games and three trips. You know, off the field, how important, uh, you know, off the field, how important are, you know, being with the team, being around the team, you know, in the team hotel? How important is that to the team chemistry on the field? Oh, it, it is. It's, you know, I, I – like anything else, the more you spend time with each other, the more understanding um, from a coaching standpoint, I get more time with them and I can have more meetings with them. And hopefully I'm more effective um, educating them. But it's also a lot of team bonding. We we had a great European handball game um, on the weekend. Uh, so there was, you know, some challenges uh, against each other. So, you know, that, that type of stuff, um, is so valuable. So, you know, we want to continue to make um, away trips is um, 
as pleasurable as we can <laughs> for a lack of a better word. Cause um, you know, sometimes it gets to be long weekends. All right, we'll wrap things up with one more question from <laughs> outside viewers. <laughs> um, from another student journalist from WVU, she's doing a story on uh, female coaches and she's coming to the expert. Uh, she would like to know about your all-female staff and how, just kind of speak on what it's like to coach with such an empowering group of women. Yeah, um, I, I think it's really important that we're planting the seed as leaders and as people that are leading a group of um, athletes at a high level. So I, I, I think that's important. With my staff, especially, we all bring such different personalities, um, but my whole staff is so successful. So I, I think it's really important that um, our athletes can see themselves in us and can see what, you know, doing your job at a high level can bring. And I think it's really important. I know, you know, in the field of coaching, we're the minority and um, sometimes, you know, you don't get to see yourself uh, at a high level. So I think it's always important that little girls get to see themselves in my players and my players get to see themselves in women that are leaders. Absolutely. Kind of going knock on that one more. What advice do you have to anyone who would like to become a division one coach someday as a female? Passion is your power. Um, I, I don't think, you know, um, anything uh, should stop you from achieving your goals and developing your craft. I, I think that it's really an incredible uh, opportunity right now. There's so many women being successful in the WNBA and, you know, NWSL um, and in the collegiate game. So it's, it's a great time to follow your dream and definitely uh, don't let anyone get in your way, but master your craft, work hard um, and be passionate. Absolutely. All right. We're finally finished. That's the last one I had. Thank <laughs> you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you guys Friday.